First things first, let's get this straight. What was the first Coldplay song you ever listened to and when did you listen to it? You see, I'm kind of trying to jog that memory for myself because as a guitar player and as just a musician in general, I feel like we all get a lot of questions about a variety of artists that can range from Taylor Swift to Polyphia. And one of the more polarizing bands is a band that came up in the 90s and early 2000s is a little known band called you see, for myself, it started about six years ago when a random girl at my college happened to ask me, are you excited that Coldplay is gonna be headlining the Super Bowl halftime show? To that, I passionately responded, no, screw Coldplay, I hate them. She was like, well, why do you hate Coldplay? And I was like, well, duh, duh, it's, it's, it's definitely because they stink, that's why. And what I didn't know at the time was that there's been a lot of bands, especially in the early 2000s, that have kind of gotten this nickelback effect, where it almost becomes cool to hate them. They just become the hated band. And I think this especially happens in the pop music and top 40 sphere, where people get this opinion on this artist before having done the deep dive and actually deciding for themselves whether this band has produced quality music. And by the way, I don't hate Nickelback. I think they actually have some cool stuff, but that's for a much, much later video. So I pretty much went along hating the band until the preparation time for the halftime show when I was talking to a friend who happened to be a guitar player who I really respect. And he told me about this mythical guitar player who was always wearing weird hats, who had a bunch of ambient tones. He said his name was Johnny Buckland. And I was like, he sounds cool. Who the heck is Johnny Buckland? And he's like, Mike, Johnny Buckland is the guitar player from Coldplay. And again, I went, yuck, Coldplay. Who the heck is this Coldplay band? I don't like that band. My tastes are refined. So finally, after being as obnoxious as possible to my friends, the Super Bowl halftime show started and they opened up with a few songs that I knew I had recognized before, but then about three minutes and 30 seconds into their set, and yes, you can check that exact time, they opened up with this riff. <laughs> And let me tell you something, hearing it for the first time was electric. I had no idea that mainstream pop music in 2016 had really any guitar riffs at all, let alone something that would grab your attention so quickly. And for a riff like that, I knew it was time to do my due diligence. I had to do the deep dive. So after that day ended, I went through and I listened to every single Coldplay song out there. I'm talking from their early demos in the late 90s, all the way up to A Head Full of Dreams, which was the album that they were promoting in 2016 at the time. And to possibly compensate for how low my GPA got during my deep dive, please make sure to subscribe. What I found interesting was that on their last album, they had a song called Up and Up, which happened to be the song that they ended with at the Super Bowl halftime show. And it was a great performance. They had like Bruno Mars and Beyonce sing with them. It sounded great. But one thing that I noticed that they admitted from the halftime show was that this song Up and Up on the album version had a minute long solo, yeah, a full minute long guitar solo. And I understand why they omitted it. But as soon as I listened to it, I was like, this solo harmonically is really interesting. The song happens to have the most basic chord progression you can imagine, okay? It's a one, five, six, four. Now, you've probably heard it before. A lot of YouTubers like the great David Bennett have talked about. It's kind of the most popular chord progression in pop music history. And if it was just that, I don't know if I would feel the need to break this song down. But they do something interesting in the choruses in the solo section. They change up just one chord. Instead of going to the six, that E minor chord, they switch it up for an F major chord using the flat seven. <laughs> That chord change becomes even cooler because we find that F sharp is in our D chord and you only have to go one step down to get to the F, which as you may know, F major is not in our diatonic major scale. It gives the choruses a new flavor that you don't hear in a lot of pop songs. So the solo kind of starts out with this really epic line that repeats itself twice. <laughs> necessarily have the best ears in the world, but upon listening to it for the first time and just knowing the underlying harmony and, and how well it fit, my very first guess was that the note that the line ended on was a D. And it fits well because D being the fifth degree in the scale, D happens to be in both of our first two chords that that line plays over. It's the fifth in our G, and it's the one in our D chord. 
they're already sort of targeting these notes that are making it really melodic, which is really cool in the solo. And then it gets to that more dissonant section with our F major that, like I said, is not in our diatonic major scale, where the lick starts off the same and it ends on the one, the G. <laughs> Now G is not in our F chord, our F triad being F, A, and C. But the one tends to be a pretty safe note over any chord you might play in a pop progression. And over the C, we actually get a new lick where we again go to our major scale, but this time we actually end up hitting the F. <laughs> which again gives it this more mixolydian feel while ending the phrase on this B note. Then we go to kind of this repeating section where he'll kind of harp on this G note for a while while ending the phrase once again on the D two times. <laughs> which, like we said before, is in both our G major and our D major chords, before going to the same lick that he did over the C, except for in a different octave, which gives it this kind of new energy that's really appreciated by your ear. Where even though he's playing the same lick as before, it feels newer because it's higher up on the neck. Now that solo would be cool enough as it is, and even though Johnny Buckland is one of the most influential guitar players for me personally, not just for my playing, but for my tone as well, but I noticed that it's not really his style to take a one minute solo in one of their songs. So I did more research and upon scouring the internet as well as the Coldplay documentary, which is really good, I highly recommend it, I found that they actually employed Noel Gallagher to play on the solo. You may know him, he's kind Kind of a 90s legend him and his brother wrote a little song called wonderwall he's part of the band oasis and he's a phenomenal guitarist and he kind of helped define an era of like brit pop and 90s guitar playing but again we'll break down wonderwall later I think the point of all of this is just for myself to recognize that I have so many preconceived notions about pop bands and just bands in general in the top 40 that there's no complexity and that it's all simple and that the music behind them just isn't good because it's pop music, kind of like that Nickelback effect before. But I want to know what you think. What bands kind of surprised you, whether that be with their guitar playing or just how intricate or detailed you might have found their musicianship to be once you took the deep dive. In any case, thank you so much for watching. It was really cool to break down Johnny Buckland and just kind of the harmonic stuff behind some cold plays even bigger songs and to see how a lot of that stuff can even vary from mainstream pop music and be really cool also getting some of these tones especially with the reverbs and at least attempting to tone match johnny buckland that was super fun <laughs> If you want to know anything else about the gear that was used to achieve any of those tones, I got all of it from Sweetwater. The links are in the description. If you had a good time, make sure to subscribe and drop a like. Have a fantastic day.